Y'all, I cannot believe this is based on a true story. Really? I mean, if you're in this situation, what to do, what to do, what to do, I would have moved my ass out. But let's talk about it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of Just My Opinion for the Watcher Netflix series review. And if this is your first time finding me and you happen to like the video, please give me that thumbs up and consider subscribing. All right, guys, so now we have The Watcher. This is a Netflix series that just popped on the streaming platform October the 13th. It has seven episodes, so if you are interested, you can go ahead and check that out right now. It is being directed by a number of directors that are in the TV game, Paris Barclay, Jennifer Lynch, Ryan Murphy, and Max Winkler. And I'll go ahead and say, I think they did a pretty decent job. Now, this series right here did sneak up on me. This is not anything that I was anticipating for a long time. And I knew it was coming out maybe a few days prior to its release. And I did say to myself, if I do get a chance, I am going to check it out. And I'm glad I did. It seems kind of spooky, seems kind of mysterious, suspenseful, seems like it's really gonna get you anxious as you're watching it on your couch at home. And I did like the cast. The cast was pretty good. I will talk about them in a second, but if you just wanna look at them real quick, there are a number of familiar faces that I have seen throughout Hollywood in the past few years. And I'm a semi fan of a lot of them. And so this was something that I was looking forward to a slight bit, you know, a few days before its release. It looked pretty good. It looked pretty decent. And I said, hey, I'm going to check this thing out, especially with it being based on a true story. But before I get into all the nitty gritty, before I talk about all my likes and dislikes, let me tell you exactly what this Netflix series is all about. A married couple moving into their dream home is being threatened by terrifying letters from a stalker signed The Watcher. All right, the first thing that I liked about this series, guys, is it's not too long. It's only seven episodes. A lot of times when Netflix does come out with their series, they will release 10 episodes in their series, sometime being like an hour long, recently the Jeffrey Dahmer story. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but at the same time, it can be intimidating, especially when you are just someone that does not have a lot of time on your hand. You wanna start something and finish it, but if it's eight or 10 hours of TV, you know, you just have to adjust accordingly and put that into your schedule. But that's not the case with The Watcher here on Netflix. It's not short. It's only seven episodes and they range from about 40 to 50 minutes each. And when I was watching each of them, they did fly by quite fast. The next thing that I liked about this series is the cast. I spoke of that briefly and here they are right here. There are a number of familiar faces. Naomi Watts, she was in King Kong, the Steven Spielberg movie that came out a number of years ago. Bobby Cannavale, he is the father. His name is Derek and his wife Naomi is named Maria. They are a married couple. That is the couple that moves into this home. And I like their relationship. It seems like they have a strong, healthy marriage, but looks can be deceiving from the outside. But from the part that we did see, it seemed like a loving couple and I did want them to win. Margot Martindale, she has been in the game for quite some time and I always like when she pops up on screens, whether it's television or movies. And we also have Richard Kind here playing her husband, Mitch. They were a hilarious couple, a silly couple, but I did like when they popped on screen as well. We also have Jennifer Coolidge. Her name is Karen in this series, and she always does play the same role over and over in Hollywood television movies. And that's not a bad thing. I mean, do whatever works, do whatever you enjoy. But if you do like some of her past roles, if you know what I'm talking about, this is another reason why you will want to tune into this series because you're just going to get more of that, more of her. There are other characters that I did like and are standouts as well in this series, but I'll talk about them just a little bit later. The next thing that I liked about this is the series is funny. It's not a comedy, but things that are true, things that you can relate to, if you see a character on screen reacting to a certain situation the exact way you would in real life, that can be funny. You're just saying to yourself, man, 
You see this right here, the audacity of us, or I went through the same thing last week or last month or last year, or man, you reacted the same way I would. Given the current situation that this family is in, there are going to be a lot of what the F moments. You're gonna be like, whoa, what's going on? And characters are going to react, they're going to respond. And I have to give it to Bobby Cannavale here. He was one of my favorite characters in this series, just because the way he did react to certain situations, especially in the first episode, and it does grab you. I was laughing my behind off. I'm not lying. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not being hyperbolic. But there was one point where he was reacting to a neighbor in the first episode, and this review will contain on spoilers. I took it back at least three or four times because it was just so funny to me. He was just one of those characters like, woman, are you serious? I'm the one that's crazy? You're the one that's crazy. Ah! But you just have to see the series, the episode, to know exactly what I'm talking about. But this man did put a smile on my face as far as his comedy, at the very least in this series not only that and before i say not only that you know he's been in a number of things before if you look at his filmography he has over 121 acting credits one of the last things that he popped up on for me was the ant-man series uh, with the mcu the marvel cinematic universe and he does a great job in that but not only was this man funny is i liked him as a husband i liked him as a father as far as his marriage is concerned with his wife naomi watts their marriage is not perfect but at the same time for the most part he is doing everything that he possibly can to make the best of the situation some of the choices he makes is not the smartest i mean about 10 years ago they did have a bankruptcy that they had to go through but i do see him now trying to turn over a new leaf when we first meet him he seems kind of like a playful father but when the crap really hits the fan he does step up to the plate trying to protect his family the best that he can i mean in the trailers his son asked him hey dad are you going to be able to protect us and i like the way he responded no no man or husband is out there is superman or black panther with all these powers and stuff but you try to do what you can with the strength and resources that you have and i think that he made some pretty good decisions as far as that's concerned and also you want to be able to please your wife make her feel safe but you want to please your wife when she is not feeling safe or comfortable in a certain situation he listens to her and tries to give her what she needs so she can feel better and feel more comfortable and feel safe whether she wants to leave the house stay he is right there to back her up and that's just another reason why i liked his character in this series and also i mean he was just a cool character i mean he wasn't perfect he was a little rough around the edges but the performance was good the acting was good and i liked everything about bobby Carnival. he was one of my favorite actors in this series and so if you're a big fan of him this is just another reason why you will want to check out this show i have to be honest when it comes to his wife right here naomi wants i i mean i didn't hate her but i didn't like her either she was kind of a fish flopping outside of water back and forth when i was just praising her husband it was just kind of annoying that you know she was never pleased you know i mean she did have some valid reasons to be upset towards the end of the series and you know I'm, I'm not trying to make any excuses i mean she did anybody would be upset if certain things goes down and you was in her situation but early on she was a bit annoying to me another character is this gentleman right here henry hunter hall his name was dakota in the series at first i didn't like him i didn't i didn't like the way they was portraying his character but they did focus on him for quite some time at a moment they left him and then came back, and I just liked how they circled everything back around. I didn't like him at first, like I said, but he ended up being a stronger character towards the middle and end of the series and added a lot of positive to this whole experience overall. Now, I also have to shout out Noma Dumezwini. I have never heard of this one before, and I apologize if I butchered her name, but she was great in this series. I liked her a lot, and I don't ever remember seeing her pop up in anything. She is going to be in The Little Mermaid. I'm just finding it out now as I'm reading it to you guys right here, looking at her filmography. But she was a great character in this series. I liked her a lot. You know, she was just, there, there was just something really sweet and pleasant about this woman right here. And I, I, I did like her. So if you're a fan of her work, this is just another reason to tune into the series because I thought she did a great job as well. And like I also said before, Jennifer Coolidge, she's a crazy over the top Karen, but she's hilarious. She is entertaining. I did like her. And also, like I said, Richard Kine and also Miss Margot Martindale. They were over the top 
hilarious, and a bit silly. And I have to say, while you're watching this series, you're going to be saying to yourself a number of times, okay, is this series really based on a true story? There are just so many things, so many aspects just flying around. It seems like they just wrote this and throwing stuff at the wall. They're trying to see if it sticks. I mean, a lot of these elements are just really out there. And I was just saying to myself, okay, maybe the basis of this series is true to where a family was threatened by anonymous letters signed by the watcher. But all these other minute details about each of these characters, the way they're kind of over-exaggerated when they are giving dialogue to each other, etc., it was just a bit over the top. And it is silly. I was laughing, but I was saying to myself, okay, how realistic is this? I don't see people acting like this in the real world. But then the series progresses on, and I was saying, wait a minute, maybe some people will react this way. This is drawing me in more and becoming much more interesting. This is crazy. I don't know what to believe and what not to believe, but at the very least, I was entertained. But guys, this is a guessing game. You are not gonna know who the watcher was. I mean, at one point, you're gonna think it's this person, then it's gonna change to this person, and then you're gonna be saying to yourself, okay, you know, a process of elimination, you know, I know that it's not these people right here, but then later on, you're like, oh, wait a minute, it could be these people or those people or him or her. You just don't know. I don't know if it was one person, two people, seven people. I don't know if the whole neighborhood was in on it, the whole town or the whole world. I was just like, who is sending these letters? Who is this anonymous figure called the Watcher? And it's fun watching this because you're trying to figure it out. You're trying to guess. You're trying to solve this mystery. And it's hard. You know, it's hard. And my goodness, I mean, like, I was all over the place trying to figure this out, like, really trying to just go into detective mode, like, who is sending these damn letters? And as far as the family trying to make that decision as well, but them trying to figure it out, I loved all of that on screen. They were doing a lot of the same things that I would do. And it was just also sad, just seeing how this situation was breaking down this family, how it was driving them crazy and drawing a wedge in their family, you know, this like to where they may not even love each other anymore. I mean, it was really hurting them in a bad way. And that's just another reason why this series was entertaining to me. I mean, at times you're going to feel different about characters. Sometimes you're going to like them. Sometimes you're going to hate them. Sometimes you think you know what's going on, but then they flip it on you and you're like, okay, what the hell is going on right here? I'm confused. I need to figure this out. I like how each episode is broken down in chapters and focuses on different characters throughout this series. And they give it to you early on. I mean, just episode one, you're going to be hooked and just want this series to continue playing. And I, I, I love it when two characters are getting together and I was just calling the story time like, oh, another story is coming up from the past. All right, let's get into it. I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to know more. And it's very, very exciting. But guys, those are the things that I really did like about the series. The things that I really didn't care for is just one thing. And it's really going to be hard to determine if people are going to be happy with the conclusion, with the end of this series, asking themselves if you thought it paid off or not. I, I think it paid off for the most part. I do. And I, I mean, I still have my questions that I do want to answer, you know, but I don't want to ruin it for you since this is based on a true story. And if you want my recommendation, I recommend you not look up the true story. Just watch the series, watch the trailer, watch the series, watch my review. And then if you want to know the true story and all of that and related to the series, you can go do that. But other than that, guys, I really did enjoy this series. I thought it was a lot of fun. It was a bit silly at times, but, you know, I was on board and I, I really couldn't wait to get to the end. I will give my rating for this at the very, very end of this video. But guys, for now, that is just my opinion. And I want to thank you so much for tuning in. If you did enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you do subscribe to the channel, you're going to get movie reviews. I just reviewed Halloween Ends. I didn't think it was that great. Hocus Pocus, Werewolf by Night. Got some spoiler reviews, series reviews, a weekly movie news roundup show. I got Power Book 2, Season 2, Raising Canaan. Atlanta Season 4, She-Hulk, Disney Plus, and also Rings of Power. But guys, again, oh, those are some interviews right there. My fault, my fault. But guys, if I had to rate The Watcher Netflix series out of a 1 out of 10... Mm, I'm going to give this. Oh, man, this is hard. This is hard. What am I going to give this? Oh. 
I'm going to give it an 8. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. And I was going to give it a 7.5, but I'm going to give it an 8 with a caveat of just suspend your disbelief just a little bit because I was entertained by this. I, I was. And so it's a good conversation piece. I think, you know, just kind of it's not as good as Dahmer, but, you know, it, it was entertaining and I, I did like it. So I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. But guys, again, I just want to thank you so much for tuning in. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.